Kia ora, Year 12 and Year 13. This is a question from the Cambridge A-Level paper from May, June 2015, um, but I'm going to put it onto the Level 3 integration playlist as well because it fits there nicely too. So if you're in the A-Level class, this is from one of the papers that I've put up on Google Classroom. Otherwise, just um, take a look and work through it. So one of the reasons I really like it is that the last question in here is a little bit different. And if you think about it when you get there, there's going to be a really easy way to do this without using any calculus. But if you don't think of that, you're going to go on a wild goose chase. So let's get started. We've got a differential equation giving me the number of microorganisms in a population at time t, and that's given by m. And that satisfies a differential equation that looks like this. So it's an interesting one. It's got two bits to it. It's proportional to the square root of the number of uh, microorganisms, so it's going to look something like that, if you think of the rate of change with time, but it's also got an oscillating thing, so a cosine wavy thing going on. I, I'm not going to graph it because I don't want this video to go on forever, but you could go and chuck that into GeoGebra um, to have a wee look. Right, so the first thing we've got to do is to solve the differential equation and get a relationship between m, k and t, in other words find a general solution, and then we're going to get a particular solution. We're going to use two bits of information, this one and this one. And that's going to give us k. The last thing we have to do is figure out the least possible number of microorganisms. All right, so here's the DE. Um, this is a nine mark question. So the first five come for getting the general solution. So dm by dt is k root m times this. As usual, we only know how to do one thing, and that is to separate the variables. So we get 1 over root m dm is equal to k cos of 0 0.02t dt. All right, so we've separated the variables, and now we're going to rewrite um, the left-hand side with a fractional power, so we can see what to do next. So there's that bit, and we can go ahead now and anti-differentiate the right-hand side because that's not too bad. So that's going to be sine of 0.02t. We need to have k, and we're going to divide by 0 0.02. So if you look at that, that's because when I use the chain rule and differentiate this, I'll get cos of 0.02t times the derivative of that. Right, so to undo that, we need to divide by 0 0.02. So um, now integrating the left-hand side, we get 2m to the power of a half is equal to 50k sine of 0.02t plus c dash. I'll call it c dash. Um, remember, we don't need to have a constant of integration on both sides because it all gets washed up in the c dash. So now I'll divide through by 2, and that gives me root m, oops, you know what happened there, root m is equal to 25k and again when I divide through the c dash divided by 2, that's still just c dash, we'll call it c dash dash. Right, now the next step, oops, that's root m there, the next step is to use my initial condition, which is that when t is 0, m is equal to 100. We'll just call that C. So C is equal to 10. Right, so we've used the initial condition, and we can now write my general solution. I'm going to do that just here and hope the stylus doesn't go bad. There we are. Root M is equal to 25K Alright, so I've just written in there um, the solution we get to for the square root of m. Now we could go ahead and square both sides of that, but looking at the mark schedule, they were quite happy for you to leave that as root m equals. So that's your first five marks right there. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is to figure out what the value of k is. So we're told for that that when t is 50, m is equal to 196. So you might hope that this worked out to have a really nice um, exact solution, but it doesn't. We get root m 
is equal to 25k sine t. So we're just substituting in, this is the easy part now, plus 10. That gives me 14 is equal to 25k sine of 1 plus 10. Now just be really careful that your calculator is set into radians because you know whenever we're differentiating we can't be working in degrees or it all goes bad. Um, what does that leave me with? Well I've got 4 over 25 sine 1 is equal to k. So if you work that through on your calculator k works out to be 0 0.19 0143. That gives me um, root m is equal to, we'll just call it 4.75 sine 0.02t plus 10. Now let's think about what the last part of the question asked. It wanted to know what was the minimum number of microorganisms. So I'm going to square both sides now. And I get m is equal to 4.75 sine of 0.02t plus 10 squared. Right, so if you're still watching, first of all, congratulations. And secondly, I want you to pause the video and look at that and think about whether there's a way that you can minimize m without using any calculus. And in particular, I want you to look at what function we've got in here and think about the fact that this thing is a squared thing. When you've had a think about that, um, come back and I'll do the rest in the video. Okay, so um, I'm, I'll put the, the equation here. M is equal to this. Hopefully what you spotted is that we know quite a lot about the sine function. And we know that the minimum value that a sine curve can take on is negative 1. So the lowest possible value for the, not mosquitoes, microorganisms will be when oh, sorry guys, I don't know what's happened there, there we go. Right, when m, when this is equal to negative 1, we're going to get the lowest possible value. So m minimized when sine of 0.02t is equal to negative 1. But notice we weren't actually asked when that happens. Now you can go through and solve and figure out when that happens, but we don't have to. All we have to do is to say that the minimum value will be m is equal to negative 4.75 plus 10 squared. Okay, so that gives me, what do I get there? 5.25 squared. So the lowest possible number of microorganisms is going to be 27.5625. That's pretty silly because you can't have part of a microorganism. I suppose you can, but not in maths. So the minimum number of microorganisms that I would say would be 28. All right, um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you've got any questions. And it is, it's quite nice practice to differentiate that expression just to check that you can do it, but it's a really, really inefficient way to solve that problem.